Hey everyone, this is Yami, your Latina Next Door. Welcome back to my channel. Today I have another installment of my monthly Look For Less Challenge. The Look For Less Challenge is a monthly challenge that I host every single month with a different co-host. We ask for you to recreate a home decor piece that may be out of your budget and we want you to make it on your own for a whole lot less. And if you are new here, I love high-end style on a small budget. So I share lots of home decor DIYs, room transformations, Dollar Tree videos, and much more. I'd like to thank my co-host Casey from Coffee With My Sunshine this month. I cannot wait to see what she creates. Make sure to visit her channel after this. I'll have her channel listed in the cards above as well as the description box below so you can check out what she did as well. The playlist to add your videos if you participated this month or if you wish to see everybody else's projects is down in my description box below. If you love the Look For Less Challenge, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and a subscribe so that you too can become part of the familia. Also, if you enjoy watching the Look For Less Challenge and or participating each month, I have a very important announcement at the end of this video that I don't want you to miss. So please stay tuned for that. All right, with all that being said, let's get started on this month's Look For Less. Okay, so if you have been following my channel for a while now, you know I'm a sucker for DIY wood projects. And I came across this beautiful piece over at Kirkland's. Now this is not the most expensive inspirational piece, but at $60 for several pieces of wood, I knew I can recreate this for a fraction of the cost. Now for this project, I decided to use the 36 inch poplar wood pieces that you can find at Home Depot. These are only a dollar and five cents a piece and I used 10 for this project. I also used these same ones when I created those faux farmhouse shutters this past winter. Now you will need to cut these down and you can use this small miter saw kit, which is only $10. I'll go ahead and link to it below or you can use an electric miter saw. You're also gonna need some form of tape measure and I personally like to use my fabric one. The original piece of art was 30 inches square, but this was too big for me. So I cut these down to 24 inches and I cut four of them in this size. Now once everything was cut, I made sure to sand all of the edges to make sure they were nice and smooth. I used a hot glue gun for this project since it's going to be fairly light and it holds very well. Also, since all of the pieces are 24 inches in length, in order to make a perfect square, you're going to need to attach them like you see here. All right, so now that the frame is done, we're going to move to the next part, which is the large X in the back. So for this, I placed two pieces of wood diagonally across the square and I made my marks with a pencil as to where I needed to make my cuts. I cut these pieces, sanded them, and then I attached them to the frame with some hot glue as well. Then in order to add a little bit more stability to the corners, I took some large popsicle sticks, traced them on the back corners, cut them down and hot glued them to the ends. That way it made the frame a little bit more sturdier. All right, so now we move on to the white square part of the frame. Okay, so for this, you're gonna need two more poplar pieces. I cut them in half and I used 45 degree angles to cut the ends down. The outside measurement is gonna be 18 inches and the inside measurement is gonna be 15 inches. You're gonna assemble these into a square and you're gonna hot glue these pieces together as well. I cut down more popsicle sticks and use them to reinforce the joints on this as well. Hold off attaching this to the larger frame for right now. 
Now we're going to assemble the final piece, which is the smaller square with the four pieces of wood at all of its corners. For this, you're going to cut four pieces of wood, the outer edge being 10 inches and the inner edge being 7 inches. Again, assemble your square and then put together with more hot glue. Use a couple more popsicle sticks to reinforce those corners as well. Now you're going to place a new piece of poplar wood all the way from the top to the bottom down the center of the frame. Make sure the piece of wood is inside of the frame and then lay down the small square directly on top of it, making sure it's centered. To make sure, use some measuring tape at the top and the bottom and make sure that they're both the same distance from the frame. Make your markings with a pencil and then cut your pieces. Now we did use a jigsaw for this because it's a little bit trickier. However, you can use a small mini miter saw kit or if you have a heavy duty box cutter, you can score the wood and snap it. Make sure you cut four of these. After they're cut, sand them down and then glue them on to your small square. Then use more popsicle sticks to reinforce these joints as well. Okay, so the next step is to either stain or paint these pieces. Now, the large square was white, so I had my cute little helper who was dying to get her hands on some paint and paint the large square white. I used my favorite chalk paint, White Adirondack from Folkart. All right, so after that one was done, we used some of the pickling wash in the color Driftwood since I wanted it to have a coastal feel. And we went ahead and used this on the smaller square. Then finally, for the large frame and the X, I used some of the wood tint in Walnut and I went ahead and stained everything. I used a chip brush to apply and I wiped off any excess. After all of the pieces were dried, I went ahead and sanded over them to give them a light distressing, and then I began to assemble. I laid the white frame down first, making sure it was even from all four corners, and I used hot glue to apply it onto the X. Then I placed the third piece right on top. Now, since this was the final piece that was gonna kind of hold everything together, I used some E6000 to adhere this square onto the white one, I then flipped over the piece and began hot gluing all of the pieces together from behind to make sure that everything was nice and secure. I made sure to hold on to any pieces that needed a little bit of extra pressure until the hot glue dried. That way it was nice and secure. And here is the finished product. Okay, so let's see how I did. The original was from Kirkland's at $60, and I was able to recreate this for only $10.50. Now, the only thing I needed to buy, because I had all of the paint and hot glue on hand, was the wood, which cost $1.05 a piece, and I only purchased 10 of them. So I think I did pretty good on this one. I really hope you enjoyed this look for less. It was a lot of fun to make. And honestly, if it wasn't for the color differences, I think it would be pretty hard to distinguish which one was the original and which one was the dupe. Now for that very important announcement. I will not be doing the look for less challenge for the next couple of months. I have some big things going on in the background that I cannot wait to share with you guys, but it's happening over the summertime while I have my kids at home and it's gonna complicate things. So I am putting a brief pause to it, but don't fret my friends, it is coming back and I will let you guys know as soon as it does. 
Thank you so much, Casey, for being my co-host this month. It was a pleasure working with you, as well as all of those people who submit every single month. I could not do this without your support. So make sure you check that playlist in my description box so you can see what else was created this month. There are some amazing YouTubers who join every month. All right, please make sure to hit like and subscribe because I will be coming at you very soon. And don't forget, I have my Room of the Month Challenge coming up. I will see you guys in my next video. Until then, adios.